public education is more about preparing people to become a good slaves in the system, right? Good matrix slaves. Become good at memorizing details, right? Listening to authority, obey the, the teacher, obey, you know, what you're being told, right? Not a lot of uh, critical thinking, problem solving, not a lot of that. And I was at this uh, ceremony and all the parents were so cheering and happy that their kids are graduating. And it really struck me at that moment how massive scam it is. <laughs> Hey, this is Mike Sigula from TrueFury.com and welcome to another video. So, today we're going to talk about the education system. Why is it so bad? What's wrong about it? How could it be improved, for example? And uh, before I'm going to get into it, I just want to let you know that currently I'm working on an online course called Exit the Matrix. And this is basically an online course that helps people to transform their lives, start attracting what is good for them, get the right partner, find their purpose, their passion, and uh, all sorts of other really awesome things amazing things so if you want to know more about it go to truthfear.com forward slash academy or click on the link in the description check out what's going on on that page and join our mailing list so you get notified when we are going live with a course so let's talk about the topic so for example John D. Rockefeller, who was one of the wealthiest people in history, one of the leaders of Industrial Revolution, founder of Standard Oil, the guy who was responsible for, uh, you know, a lot of developments during the Industrial Revolution, was very much influential in how the modern education system was shaped and public schools and universities. So for example, in 1902, he founded the General Education Board and the General Education Board was incorporated by an act of Congress that took place on January 12, 1903. Their main objective was the promotion of education within the United States of America without distinction of race, sex or creed. And he had a lot of influence through his other organizations such as the Rockefeller Foundation. And you know, many researchers claim that his philanthropic endeavors were actually more uh, cover for his real agenda, which was just to influence the education system and, you know, just shape public perception, influence the curriculum and to create obedient workers, to create obedient workforce. So he famously said, I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers. Also, one of the earliest pioneers of public education was Prussia, a now part of modern day Germany. And in the late 18th century, Prussia implemented a compulsory education system that aimed to provide basic education to all children. The Prussian model emphasized the importance of standardized curriculum state control over education and trained teachers. The ideas of public education spread to other countries in Europe and North America. The critics argue that this model was designed to support obedience and conformity. And the Prussian model focused on producing disciplined and obedient citizens who would serve the state and adhere to authority. Both of these models, let's say, we're kind of shaping a lot of uh, public education in the modern times. But if you really want to kind of dig deeper into 
the history of public education, of modern public education, probably you should check out the documentary The Pyramid of Power Part 1 by Derek Bros. He's a really good investigative journalist. So you get the idea of like some of the history, background and motivation behind the modern public education. So now let's get a little bit more into if some of these claims can be verified. If the education system, public education is really kind of designed to just create obedient workers. To me, this whole topic of public education is very personal because, you know, I grew up in Poland. I studied in two different countries. So, you know, I went to university in the UK. I went to high school in Poland. I basically struggled with dyslexia because, you know, I was diagnosed with dyslexia as a teenager. And this wasn't very much understood anywhere really. No one really cared about it. So that was like the first issue and challenge because, you know, a lot of people don't understand dyslexia. Dyslexia has a lot of different uh, forms, you know, levels. So people such as myself, I've had a lot of problems with conventional education, with reading, writing, remembering what I'm reading, things like that. But on the other hand, you know, I had a lot of creative ideas. I could make deep connections in my head, visualize things. So I had some of the gifts that many people don't have and still have them. But I struggled with many things that a lot of people don't have any problems with. So here is the first thing that the education system is so standardized that basically it does not really uh, look at individual needs very often. Not, not all schools, of course, but you know, you have to remember that different people have very different minds, very, they are wired differently. There are some people who are gonna struggle with conventional methods and system and then they might excel in many other areas and uh, for someone like me i was considered like really one of the worst students <laughs> they thought i'm dumb <laughs> things like that <laughs> so i wasn't even interested in school at all uh, i would focus on sports and things like that because i was way more passionate about that but you see this is the first problem that instead of trying to encourage someone like me the system would just punish me and reject someone like me and uh, and you know make my life way harder so you know i've kept trying i went to university in the uk um, and uh, again <laughs> i didn't like a lot of things about the system for example i went to study business management at one university and after first year i left it and went to study philosophy, religion and ethics at a different university. You know, there were so many things that I didn't like about it. First was just that I had to study things that I didn't enjoy, you know. I had to learn about things that were often completely useless. <laughs> For example, business management or any kind of business studies, any kind of management studies. You know, anyone who had anything to do with business will tell you that really everything is about solving problems, right? And uh, becoming creative in solving problems, you know, managing things under stress, things like that. And very often the business studies focus on writing essays on topics that you can read about, you know. I, I didn't need to spend $50,000 to learn how to write essays because I can write blog posts, for example, and, uh, you know, so someone's gonna read 20 very good books. Learn to write essays by just having a blog and, uh, and then go and really start hustling and, and learning through work and trying to solve problems. And this person's gonna get way 
further than you know best students who spend fifty thousand on learning some basic stuff about how corporations do things or how companies do things and you know learning how to write these essays and obviously i'm generalizing here because different degrees different uh, universities will work differently some of them are better some of not but i found it really really interesting how useless a lot of this stuff was you know the, there was a period where i was basically helping someone in my family to go through university there was someone close to me and uh, this person had a massive problem to study with because of dyslexia as well english not being a first language so i was kind of helping this person throughout the university throughout her degree trying to you know help her to to like study to write essays how to approach problems and things like that so i was very much involved throughout the, the undergraduate studies and you know postgraduate as well masters as well and at that time already as an adult as someone who already spent many years studying different fields on my own because that's what re ultimately happened I, I quit I left the university and I just decided you know I'm just gonna do things my my own way so I started learning myself you know from books from uh, internet and things like that and that's really how I got my knowledge until now but I had this period when I was uh, helping someone in my family and at that time I was very involved you know I would go to university I would meet the teachers go to their parties sometimes all sorts of things like that so I was kind of very much involved in the university life as a kind of tutor let's say unofficially and uh, I was at the graduation ceremony after three years of like helping and things like that and I was like thinking like oh my god this is so much rubbish <laughs> they didn't learn anything useful there you know I was just writing essays and learning a little bit how to do a little bit of research online things like that and then you know spending a fortune on that fortune tens of thousands of pounds getting in depth at a very early age and I was at this uh, ceremony and all the parents were so cheering and happy that their kids are graduating and it really struck me at that moment how massive scam it is <laughs> because most of these people really didn't learn anything at all apart from you know learning how to write essays which you can do without spending 30,000 pounds or 50,000 dollars <laughs> and um, many of them really uh, still can't get a good decent job afterwards because you know they can't sell themselves or you know they cannot negotiate well and things like that I'm speaking very broadly here it depends on many things what degree what the university what field or things like that so please keep it, these things in mind I'm not saying that everything works the same way of course but that really kind of made me think about these things and then I was still tutoring the same person at different university way better it was like one of the best universities different degree and again it was the same problem a lot of stuff was just like academic studies not very useful for practice right not very practical so really a lot of these experiences taught me that public education is more about preparing people to become a good slaves in the system right good matrix slaves become good at memorizing details right listening to authority obey the the teacher obey you know what you're being told right not a lot of uh critical thinking problem solving not a lot of that and then obviously no room for different types of people different minds trying to kind of cultivate what you're really good at and amplify that no 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 just standardized testing 
you get rewarded if you memorize everything properly you repeated that yes th this means you're smart right another issue is that you know people are exposed to learn selected ideas and uh, very often a bunch of half truths <laughs> and you know sometimes you, you're gonna finish your degree and what you were studying on your first year it's already invalid or it's like the technology changed or there is new better way or new understandings or whatever again this is just my theory um, you know there's gonna be differences depending on the region depending on the type of degree depending on the university I'm just speaking broadly of course you know you want to become a doctor do you have any other choices no you gotta have to you know learn all the conventional methods and get your diploma and things like that otherwise you're not gonna get a job but I'm just saying how a lot of this stuff is really kind of you know scammy because you get yourself in depth you not really learn much at all but you you learn to memorize a bunch of uh, half truths and you know and some kind of selected uh, things and if you memorize them you repeat them you get rewarded and obviously that doesn't test your intelligence or anything really and uh, without it you know you're not gonna even be able to become a good functioning member of society right <laughs> so it's kind of it the system is forcing a lot of people to take this path otherwise they, they're not gonna even uh, be be financially successful let's say or it's gonna be difficult and you know many people they get excited when they graduate finally and not much changes afterwards they still need to learn how to navigate through the system of getting a job selling themselves you know negotiating not ending up in some shitty dead-end job or whatever a low paid job or somewhere where they're gonna be just used and things like that so this is my criticism of this public school system and academia now let me share with you some ideas about what could be different for example and we are talking more about uh, you know public schools primary education things like that so first thing in my view is that everyone is different right every child is different and every child has probably some kind of predispositions and gifts some of them are uh, maybe not discovered yet so the education system really should put attention on trying to figure out what the child is good at and allow this child to develop in the direction they are really good at right for example uh, I have my my auntie she's a principal in Montessori she, she's very much involved with Montessori method and apparently this is more or less what they what they do there so not Put everyone into the same box and you know you got to memorize this and that but actually trying to figure out what the child is really good at what are their gifts and then try to allow them to, to you know cultivate that talent and then that would become maybe a career for them this is obviously way better than anything because then someone might do something they're really passionate about right you know how many people end up uh, miserable and happy doing something they they thought it's going to be better and they didn't expect it's going to be draining and things like that right so this is one idea and then for especially for children i actually made a list of uh, some of the things that i would like to see if let's say you know i would send my kids for example one day to school this is what I think would be really useful for them. So allow them to learn critical thinking, for example. Problem solving skills and creativity, stress management, 
money management or financial literacy, relationship building skills, conflict solving skills, negotiation skills, teaching kids compassion, teaching them importance of taking care of health to prevent disease, for example, importance of building positive habits, eliminating negative habits, time management, self-evaluation or how to learn when someone is uh, trying to deceive us, how to eliminate self-sabotage when someone feels low self-esteem, unworthy, lack of self-love. Another thing is a lot of parents, for example, they have absolutely no education on how to raise children. And then first couple of years of kids' life, this is where their subconscious is shaping and their behaviors and patterns. And parents who have no idea how to raise these children shout at them, program them to act in destructive ways. They often, parents have their own traumas and then they push them on kids because they don't really have any clue on how to act differently. And that the child is literally having traumas throughout their whole lives or some really negative scenarios and patterns. And this has to do with uh, early development of a child. So these types of things, I think, should be taught at school to people, you know, so, so they don't make these types of mistakes. Or maybe things like, where do things come from? You know, a lot of kids think that hot dogs are veggies. Maybe the child should understand some of these things, right? A lot of kids today in Western countries are very spoiled. And uh, they don't value things, you know, they grow up and then they just want more and more and more. They become unhappy, miserable because they have very high expectations. And uh, I think it would be really nice for them to, for example, have some experiences where they can start valuing what they have. So, for example, I don't know, go on a trip to Africa or somewhere and see how kids live in other places. And then you're going to start valuing all the toys you have, all the gadgets, all the life you have, because in many, many places, many kids don't even have shoes or, or things like that. And you know, and they're happier than a lot of these American and Western kids that have everything and uh, still are miserable. Anyway, that's it. This is just my kind of rumbling on, on this topic because I had a lot of, uh, bad experiences with public education. And this is very broad, right? I know there's going to be people who are going to say, no, 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 my university is amazing. I learned so much. My degree was great. My school was great. That's cool. That's cool. I'm just speaking broadly here, but let me know about your views and your experiences with public education. Do you think it is a kind of a scam a little bit to create a bunch of matrix slaves. That's what I think. Let me know how would you improve the education system? What could be done better? And remember about truefury.com forward slash academy. Have a look what's going on there. Sign up for my mailing list because we are doing an online course. It's going to be launching shortly. It takes a little bit of time. I'm and finishing the materials more or less now, but it's gonna help people with a lot of these things. How to find your purpose, how to find your passion, how to cultivate gifts, how to work on your imbalances so you become a version of that attracts the right things to you. Really a, a lot of really amazing things. Go to trifury.com forward slash academy or Click on the link below this video, sign up for a mailing list. Follow me on Instagram, it's Mike Saigula on Instagram. And thank you for watching, until next time.